Hey, what is going on guys? Max Settings here and welcome back to another review. In today's review, we are going to be taking a look at the Odyssey Penrose. Welcome to the first review of 2021. But anyway, a little disclaimer before we get into today's review. Uh, this Penrose was loaned to me by Odyssey for this review, but I'm not paid or influenced in any way to say anything in particular about it. So this review is just my honest opinion and feedback about this product. And one more thing to know, just a little uh, gear update from me. I switched mic interfaces from a Steinberg UR22 uh, version 1 to a Motu M2. Uh, I was getting some kind of weird clipping issues that I think was related to me more or less having to max out the gain for my uh, current microphone. But I went ahead and switched over to the Motu M2, so hopefully uh, this should fix that problem and sound a little better. But anyway, with, th with those uh, little updates out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the review. So the Odyssey Penrose is, you could say, arguably the successor to the Odyssey Mobius, which I reviewed, uh, I'd say maybe a year, year and a half ago now, and I quite liked it. It was Odyssey's uh, first entry into the gaming headset scene, and this is the follow-up to it. It doesn't directly replace the Mobius, but it is a different product entirely. So let's go ahead and get specs out of the way. So the Penrose is coming in at $299. It is using a planar magnetic driver and it is an active headphone, so it has a built-in amplifier. It has a frequency response of 10 to 50,000 hertz. It weighs 320 grams. And then as for connectivity, you have Bluetooth, but only, I believe, uh, AAC and SPC. And then 2.4 gigahertz wireless, which we will talk about in just a little bit. So that is basically all the specs for the Odyssey Penrose. Now, as for other things to note about the Odyssey Penrose, there are two versions of it, the Penrose and the Penrose X. This particular unit is the Penrose. The Penrose X is for Xbox uh, and PC. And then the Penrose X is for PC, PlayStation, and Mac OS. So if you are a Mac user or a PlayStation user, then you are required to get the Penrose, and if you are an Xbox user, you can get the Penrose X. The only difference between them otherwise is a green coloration for the X version to match the Xbox, and then blue is obviously the PlayStation color. But if you are a PC user, you can pick whichever color you prefer. And then the Penrose adds one big feature from the Mobius, and that is 2.4 gigahertz wireless. The Mobius was a neat gaming headset, but the one thing it lacked was, while it was a wireless headphone, it did not work while gaming wireless because Bluetooth, and Bluetooth has too much latency. But now, thanks to this little dongle, this thing now can do sound over 2.4 gigahertz wireless, which means you can game with essentially no latency as well as send and receive audio both ways through the microphone. So that is one of the big differences between this and the Mobius. And then as for other differences, the Penrose uh, loses quite a few features from the Mobius. So there's no Waves NX head tracking, there are no EQ profiles, and there is no uh, 5.1 or 7.1 surround of any sort like the Mobius had. So this is more just a straight up uh, stereo wireless headset which is honestly preferred uh, in my book because the Waves NX head tracking was kind of a neat gimmick, but it wasn't really useful. And I personally do not like virtual surround uh, for gaming. So I much prefer stereo and that is what this is. And then as for other differences between this and the Mobius, this has an improved microphone that was co-developed by Shure. So I will do a little demo of this later. And then one other thing that is different between this and the Mobius is that this cannot be used over USB, where the Mobius you could plug in and use it as a USB headphone, this headphone cannot. And this one also can be used analog, but it still does have to go through the amplifier, where the amplifier is still on and you can't uh, bypass it even if you feed it through auxiliary. So let's go ahead and talk about the build and the comfort. So if you saw my review of the Odyssey Mobius, it's exactly the same. It is a plastic build all around, plastic headband with kind of a rubberized texture. 
have a little bit of a head pad there that's uh, fairly squishy. The slider things here are all plastic. And this is all kind of like a soft touch plastic finish. There's a little bit of a pattern. Uh, there's a swivel and you have a protein leather pad that pops off and they obviously sell replacements with the little L and R indicators. Um, the build quality on it, I would say, doesn't feel particularly amazing. Uh, for a gaming headset, it feels, I'd say, about par for the course, but some of these plastic bits are a bit thin. And I have seen at least one or two Reddit posts of people breaking these. I don't know how careless they were with them, but it's definitely not the most durably built thing in the world. It does have some of that flimsy uh, plastic feeling to it. So I wish they would have done some metal bits in it just to give it a little bit more premium of a feel. But for a $300 wireless gaming headset, I wouldn't say it is uh, out of the normal. As for uh, other aspects of the build, so this is your microphone mute switch, so it just mutes and unmutes your microphone. This is your power button that powers on the unit. On this cup, this is the button to turn on the Bluetooth. This is where your microphone plugs in. Uh, then you have your auxiliary input, USB-C charging port, uh, and then you have microphone volume and headphone volume slider. And the left cup is completely barren of any other features or buttons of any sort. And then moving into comfort, the Penrose is the, again the same comfort as the Mobius basically. Um, it has a, a bit of clamp. It's not overly clampy, but it definitely has some clamping force. It's not too, too heavy, but it definitely has a little bit of weight to it. But the padding all in all, is pretty good and I did use this for several uh, four or five hour gaming sessions and didn't really have uh, much issue. I could see maybe some people having issues with heat because these pads don't breathe particularly well. But for me personally, I didn't find them uh, particularly uncomfortable. They're not the most comfortable headphones ever, but I don't think too many people should have issues with these. So all in all, the comfort is pretty acceptable. Now, a few other things to note. Um, let's talk about, real quick, the noise floor. So one of my biggest complaints about the Mobius was that it had a lot of hiss from the noise floor of the amplifiers. And one of the things that I most requested for a V2 Mobius was that they fix the noise floor. And unfortunately, I am here to report that they have not done that. The Penrose definitely has a bit of amplifier hiss. I also have gotten some feedback or some like kind of sounds like some interference from using the 2.4 gigahertz wireless and kind of get some like of that like electrical type noise. Not very common, but I have had it happen at least once. So that is something to note. But no, they did not fix the amplifier hiss. One thing that I did find interesting, however, is it does seem when you plug it in via auxiliary, even though it still goes through the amp, that the hiss mostly goes away. When as soon as you plug in the aux cable, it sounds like the hiss basically more or less stops. And that's kind of strange to me. I'm not sure if the noise floor is not necessarily then the amp, but it's just the noise floor of the wireless signal. I'm not sure why that is, but that is something to note. So if you do use these through auxiliary, you will get much less hiss if you are using them wireless. So just a few more things to note about the Penrose. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a microphone test of this. Um, one thing to note about the microphone test, the microphone does sound much better wired than wireless, but I'm only going to go ahead and demo it wirelessly because I feel like that's what most people care about. That's kind of the point of this. If you're going to get a wired headset, I think there's other pretty comparable options for less money where this really is just all about the wireless. So I'm just going to go ahead and demo it uh, wirelessly, but I will link uh, Odyssey's own demos uh, in the description below for you to check out if you want to hear it both wired and wirelessly. All right, so here we are testing the microphone on the Penrose. Like I said, this was co-developed with Shure and it is a bit of a step up versus the uh, Mobius. I still don't think it's a particularly amazing microphone, but it certainly gets the job done in terms of game chat and voice chat, and you can actually use it while wirelessly. Uh, it definitely has a lot more compression when it is used wirelessly versus wired, but it's really nice to have a completely wireless headset that you can walk around with and don't have to deal with any cables. Uh, you can just walk around your room and do whatever. So that is very, very nice to have. Um, 
It does have a pop filter, but I'm sure as you can tell, plosives are still somewhat of an issue. And the other thing that I really don't like about any headset microphones is when you put them close enough to your mouth when, you know, they sound good, at least to me, then you get a lot of noise from your nose when you breathe out, so you kind of get that. But when you move it far enough away from your mouth where, you know, you don't, it doesn't, like, come in contact with the air you're breathing out of your nose, then it sounds, you know, very, very quiet and distant like this. So let me see how close I can get it. But you see, even just that much closer, you can hear my nose. So it's kind of hard to find that, like, perfect balance of, you know, no, not being able to blow your nose uh, or exhale, I guess, out of your nose into the microphone. So, yeah, that's just kind of a downfall with uh, all headset microphones in general. But Penrose microphone, all in all, not too shabby. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the most important section of this video, which is the sound. So the Odyssey Penrose uh, pretty much reminds me of the Odyssey Mobius in its default profile. So that means we have a little bit of a sub bass boost, about a couple decibels, and then after that, the rest of your uh, mid-range or lower mid-range and mid-bass area is more or less flat. After that, um, your mids are fairly in line, uh, slightly recessed, I'd say around three to 4K. There seems to be a bit of a recession there. Uh, and as well as like that five to 6K area, there is also a bit of a recession. And then your treble more or less comes back up to be a slightly boosted, maybe two dB or so in that like nine to 10K area. But all in all, it is tuned much better than most of the larger Odysseys. It has more or less has normal mid-range sands that's some three to four K area of your upper mid-range, maybe like five K as well. But more mids than most Odysseys do, at least most of the larger Odysseys. So yeah, more or less reminds me of the Mobius tuning all in all, which I'm sure they probably just uh, copied the default tuning of the Mobius because it was a fairly solid tuning all in all. Now, as for other areas, let's go ahead and talk detail. So the Mobius had a fairly good detail all in all, particularly when using it wired versus wireless. The Penrose definitely holds up with detail when it is used wirelessly. However, you do lose a little bit of detail to my ear when using it wirelessly versus wired. It sounds like there's a little bit of compression and a little bit of loss of detail. Even the 2.4 gigahertz wireless, I believe is a lossless wireless codec, but it does seem like there's still a little bit of compression of some sort happening, which I know is a contradictory statement, but that's at least what it seems like to uh, my ear. But all in all, regardless if you use wired or wireless, it has fairly decent detail. It's not the most resolving headphone I've heard at all. It's not the most resolving wireless headphone all in all. But like the Mobius did, the Penrose has very good detail uh, for what it is and above most consumer grade wireless headphones. It has surprisingly good treble resolution all in all. The mids can be a touch hazy, but nothing terrible. And the bass resolution is not the best out there. It definitely has some planar compression in the bass and not the most textured thing in the world. But for its price point of a $300 closeback planar, the bass, I would say, is decent enough and fairly acceptable. As for dynamics, it's not the most dynamic thing in the world. Like I said, it has some planar compression all across the range. More so, uh, I'd say, in the overall micro detailing, but the macro is also somewhat compressed. But not like horrendously compressed or anything. There's, I've heard open headphones five times as much with much more compression, but it definitely has some planar compression across the board. As for soundstage, it is uh, decent enough. I would say it's a, I'd say it's slightly above average for a closed back headphone. One thing it does very, very well is imaging. I was very, very surprised. Um, complex tracks with like lots of like little bells, a xylophone, um, chimes, very, very nice pinpoint imaging across the board. I would actually say that's well above average. Um, very, very, very good imaging for a closed back headphone. And then as for timbre, definitely has some of that uh, planar plastic timbre and the compression doesn't really help as well as that kind of dip in that upper mid to the lower treble region. 
but again, not awful by any regards. And I believe that is all we have to talk about regarding the Penrose's sound. Okay, so now let's talk comparisons here and my final thoughts. So the Odyssey Penrose, all in all, is something that I think the audio scene has been missing for a while. A headset that you can use wirelessly that actually sounds good. The majority of other um, wireless gaming headsets out there are bad like really bad as most you know wireless headsets are most of you know, like the razors corsairs logitechs etc none of those are particularly great the one that i've seen measured that actually looks somewhat acceptable is the steel series 9x that looks like it could actually maybe be passable but i'm sure the technical performance is not anywhere near this so the penrose gives you a i guess audiophile experience if you want to use that term where it has acceptable technical performance for a $300 closed back planar headphone all in all with good detail imaging and decent enough dynamics and everything else. And it sounds better than pretty much all the consumer Bluetooth ANC headphones. I mean, it sounds better than AirPods Max, XM4, etc. I could see taking K371 over it if you just wanted a straight closed back, but it's not wireless unless you get the K371VT. Um, but this is better tuned all in all, um, and you don't have as amplifier hits with a wire, but if you want a wireless headphone for 300 bucks, even just as a Bluetooth headphone, and if you don't care about ANC and can live with some amplifier hiss, this is not a bad pick overall. I wish it had Aptex and LDAC. Uh, that seems like a missed opportunity because SBC AAC, not the best codecs in the world, but if you have an iPhone, it doesn't matter because that's all you get anyway. But for Android users, I could see that being a downside all in all. The microphone is a step up over the Mobius for sure. It is decent enough, and it's really nice to be able to use it wirelessly with no latency. So the Penrose more or less fills a niche in the market that's really been missing. Like I said, a good sounding wireless head or headset that you can actually game in wirelessly. And to me, the Penrose makes the Mobius kind of a hard sell, right? Because what do you gain with the Mobius over this? Um, 7.1 surround, which again, I don't like. I know the PC gamers folks like it, but most audiophiles agree that 7.1 is not really good, even for gaming. So I don't care about that. Waves Next Head Tracking, like I said, is a cool gimmick, but I didn't really use it for music and I really didn't use it for games. I really don't see any point of it for games. So again, I don't need that. There's EQ profiles, but I use the Mobius on the default profile anyway. And if you want to EQ it, there's just use an EQ. So, and then with this, it's $100 cheaper than Mobius. I get to use it wirelessly while gaming and I get a better microphone without giving up really any features that I particularly care about. So all in all, Penrose is just, it makes more sense to me than the Mobius for most people. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Odyssey Penrose. I do absolutely recommend it for what it is, and it is pretty much the first of kind to the market. But links of where to buy this in the description below, as well as my Twitter, my contact email, and all other relevant information. Once again, big thanks to Odyssey for providing this for review. I will link their store in the description below. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.